Let's go to the word. A text very known by everyone is they want to bring a word on Exodus 33 from the verse 13 to 15. Exodus chapter 33 from the verse 13 to the 15. Exodus 33 from 13 to 15 says, If you're pleased with me, teach me your ways so I may know you and continue to find favor with you. Remember that this nation is your people. The Lord replied, My presence will go with you, and I will give you the rest. And then Moses said to him, if your presence does not go with us, do not send us from up there. I want to talk to you about presence of God, causes and effects. Whenever we're talking about the presence of God, cause and effect, the cause is what produces the fact. And that is what produces the presence of God. The effect is a result of the fact. And what's the fact? The presence of God. So the cause and effect. Repeat. The cause is what produces the fact. The fact, what I'm going to treat here, is the presence of God. And the effect is the result of the fact, the re result of the presence of God in our life. Why does it happen? Very simple, very objective very focused. So this text is very interesting. I'm going to talk first about causes. What can cause the presence of God in our life? Because the Bible, nothing in the Bible is scrambled and just thrown out there without fundamentals of obedience, of rules for things to be done. There are no promises Evasive. All the promises are sustained on conditions that we have to follow. The promise of the presence of God is a fact, is real. But if we want the presence of God, what can cause the presence of God in our lives? That's what I want to talk to you guys about. The Word of God says on Exodus 33, 17, it, you found grace on my eyes. I know you by the name. So that's God speaking to Moses. You found grace on my eyes, and I know you by your name. You know already, I'm just saying to consolidate that, but God gave us, gave us in a condition that we don't see the man as we do. And the, the verse on 1 Samuel, whenever he sent the prophet Samuel to anoint a new king, then the fighters, the warriors, were going past, and he thought that those were the, the kings. But he was looking only by the looks, by how beautiful they are. But God that doesn't look the way the, the men look. The God looks to the heart. And he only looks for the two for the two attributes that he has. The only presence and only signs. Only signs. So he's present in all times and he knows everything. That's why no one fools. God. He knows your feelings. He knows your thoughts. So, Jeremiah says that his quadrants, the thoughts, is to analyze and millim millimetrically your mind, willing, and thoughts. And when it, he does it, he analyzes in a very detailed way. That's what he's trying to say to Moses. I know you, my name. You found grace upon my eyes. I know you by name. And then 
we can begin to understand the why the presence of God will start manifest itself. Because when God says that he, when he found grace, is that your attitudes, your character attracted me. That's what God saying to Moses. Your way of life, your way of living attracted me. So some characteristics of Moses. He was a hero of faith. He is written in the name of the warriors of faith. So the faith, there's no other way to please God than by the faith. In the second place, he was a loving man. And think about the many wars and many confusion that the people of real Israel brought to him. And even God said that he would kill everyone of the people of Israel and give him and not other people. And, but he said no. And that shows how much he loves. But also, he's very brave, very, very brave man when he says to God, God, if you don't forgive this people, then cross my, my name off your book. You have to be very brave to say that to God. But also, he was, he had spiritual discernment. He had a dis spiritual discernment. It's very accurate. In Exodus 32, God says to him, that I'm going to send you my angel upon the people. And then on 33, verse 15, he says that if your presence is not with us, do not let us go. Moses was not impacted by the angel saying, do you know that nowadays angels make more success than God? Many times at church, the pastor says that God is here. And okay, glory, glory, all right. Brothers and sisters, there is an angel dressed in white with a... Angels are getting more success than God. There's inversion of values nowadays. People give more attention to the angels than the, for the presence of God. People nowadays in the church, they're paying more attention to the moment of moving of the Holy Spirit than a life full of the Holy Spirit. They want a movement in the service, but they want a, they don't want a life full of the Holy Spirit. They don't have the discernment to see that. They would prefer a revelation of a brother than the revelation of the word. They would go trying to chase revelations, and they found just fake pro fake revelations. They try and get a prophecy. They found fake prophecies. There's an inversion of values. They prefer revelations than the word of God. They would prefer other places or online churches than going to church and being communion with the members. The people without church, the research about people that are not in any church, that they cannot adapt to any any church. And this is a huge excuse, and I'm not going to take that. This is people that have no responsibility with the word. They have no responsibility with the body of Christ. But look at the discernment of Moses. Angel, I, I don't care about angel. But if the presence of God is not with me, don't let me leave. I want your presence. I'm showing you the conditions if we want the presence of God in our life. But look what the Lord says. You found grace on my eyes. I know you by your name. And that says the intimacy of Moses with God. He was a man that had intimacy with God. In Exodus 34, 11, said that he would speak face to face 
with God. And he also says, please, show me your glory. Moses had was hungry and thirsty of having that intimacy with God. So do you, have, do you want the presence of God in your life? Here. Faith, love, the sermon of spiritual discernment. He feel the presence. Intimacy with God. On chapter 34, verse 11, says, Save what I... What my, my orders are. Be obedient. If you're in the presence of God, but you don't want to be under His word, if you're in the presence of God, organization. From the verse 33 of Exodus up until the chapter 10 of Numbers, going through the 27 chapters of Leviticus, 44 chapters, until the presence of God manifests and guide the people throughout the desert. There was an organization and rules in the Bible. 44 chapters of organization until the presence of God falls upon the tabernacle. If you want the presence of God, but your your life is a, is a huge mess. There's a mess on, the, on your wedding, a mess on your finances, on your family, but you want the presence of God? Mm -hmm. Don't be scared by it. You don't want the presence of God? Even a king to die, the Lord said for him to organize his house before him. Him dying. But God gives us the first example. God gives us the example of organization. It's always God. Ordinance in the kingdom. Before the foundation of the world, you have the classifications of the archangels, angels, seraphims, Protestants. Is a kingdom of organization, of hierarchy, the ordinance in the creation that came in stages to put the man into the earth, the ordinance at church. Church is a body of many members interdependent, but and God put people there to have different functions, different duties on those. And the body, human body, has its own members that work on a way for us to have life. So God loves what's organized. Everything that came from him was organized. God is not a God of confusion, but it's a God of peace made everything with decency and peace. The church is not you do whatever you want, the way you want, the time you want. There's an ordinance. There's an ordinance of ministries. Uh, there's a hierarchy inside church. It's not like everyone says whatever they want. Everyone do whatever they want. This this is not how it works. One time I was preaching here on a Tuesday, and there was a guy speaking in tongues so loud, and everyone just paying attention on it, and he wanted to say a prophecy. I said, God doesn't speak on two times at the same time. So hold back, and if you want, you're saying the the end of the service. And that happened four years ago. People might remember that. And then the guy said, no, I'm going to speak right now. And then I said, kick him out. At the same time, what is this? No, I'm going to speak right now. And then the workers of our church just 
J just took him out. He said, we're gonna, gonna hurt you. And I said, goes back to it. And I was preaching in one, in one of our churches that there was a very famous singer. She was really, really, really famous. She was from the assembly of God, from the mystery. I was going to preach there on Sao Paulo. Alexander was here with me. And the, the church was full, full of people. Then the sister dropped the microphone said, members, if you want to just run from, from a place to the other, if you want to spin. But I said, here, no. Not here. And I said it so loud that even the fourth row could listen to it. Because first, she doesn't have authority to do that. She was not called to motivate people to run and spin or anything. And when I said not here, she was so scared. She, she jumped back and she almost fell. What, what is this kind of talk? This has an ordinance. It's not a huge mess. We are a church from the living God. The church of the living God has ordinance, has decency and organization. God is not a God of confusions. Whenever one says, the other one says no. And what I'm going to say here is not, it's not a joke. A church, assembly of God. I'm not going to say where. And nowadays he is he's a pastor here. He was a member of that church before. Then he was called to do a greeting to open a service. And then 10, 15, 20 minutes. And, and then the pastor came. I wrote a note for him. And he was angry at him. was mad at him that this church needs to be to be repaired or something. They need to change that. But then he said, you stop talking. But then the other brother said back to him, you stop talking because... <laughs> You have no ordinance here. And, and you think that that ended already. So then the first one said that who, whoever's speaking here is the father and you're the son. So you should stop talking. And then he was kind of lost. The, the, the pastor came to the altar, grabbed the, the microphone and said that if God said it said and should be done. But until then, no one understood what happened and they're probably still there fighting over it. <laughs> and we think that God's going to act in the middle of messes and confusions. I, w I went preaching in another church around here. And I didn't really want to go, but everyone just had me go there. They wanted me to go there so much. You have to go, you have to go. And uh, I finally went there. Now, seeing that there was a brother in front of me speaking, and then that there was this guy spinning in the aisles. He was just spinning, spinning. And then, <laughs> you guys think that God's, God's a joke? No. <laughs> He was spinning in the middle of the aisle, so he took the attention away from what the guy was preaching, the altar. And then, this is incredible. He would spin. as a young guy. He was about, about 25 years of age. He would spin and then go next to a lady. He would bring closer to him and then speak on her ear. And then he would spin, go to, go to another lady, another one of the, the girls, and speak to her. Oh, so he only has revelations for the beautiful young ladies, but not to to, to the sweaty guys at church. Mm. Then he, he did that four or five times. Then, then he sat at the church, and whenever I went up to the altar, I just said, you spin, and you're going to see what you're going to face. 
because I have the word. Because if you have anything to do here after I speak, you do. Because if you want to do while I'm preaching, you're going to go out of this church. You're going to be sitting outside. Then I preached, I said, I walked out, and then another guy came in and did the same thing. He would take the attention away from that guy. But it has to be an ordinance. So this is another story about another not the church. I was the the famous preacher of the television. I would never preached in that in that church or that area. And there were so many people, so many people at that church, and I was a preacher. So then, I started preaching. I saw this heavy environment, this kind of heavy thing, and we there are pastors. We kind kind of understand. We we sense what's going on, and then I start preaching. And then the, the, the old altar on the Assembly of God, you had to go from the side and get in. There's no steps on it. So then I see this movement of people being thrown from one side to the other, and I just try to take a look to see what it was. And then I start seeing it. Uh, a, a brother with his hand right in front him, just pushing people away. Then he came to the altar. And whenever he he made that curve, I noticed that he wanted to go up in the altar. And was there Marcelino Margarida that was pastor from Pastor Santos that was my pastor's. He died with 76 years of ministry, 76 years being pastor, not age. 76 years of being pastors. He was in the altar. Then whenever he got in the altar, I told you hold him there because I'm not going to give him the microphone. That's what I said to the pastor. And then he came. And then the, the brother of the president pastor came. He came to, to, to grab the microphone. Then he was in the middle of us. So it was me, the brother, and then the guy. He was trying to reach to grab the microphone. And I, just, I was just waiting to see where he would go. Then this guy controlled him and took him away. And then I came back and said that God is not a God of confusion. I'm here preaching the word of God. If someone has anything from God, wait. Church has ordinance. Put him to sit there. Then I preached. The ambient, the environment just changed and it opened in a spectacular way. And then whenever the service ended, many, many members of the church, I was preaching on uh, ending uh, a, of, of a party of 15 days at this church. So whenever, at the end of the the service, people came to me saying that for a week now, no one could end their preach because of that guy. And the experience is something great. But in my heart, I had fear, but it was said to me that I had to expel that devil inside him. But this a member of the Assembly of God it was said to me, expel that, expel that, the devil. Nowadays, if he said half a word, I would get out. But then I had fear. Then the people came to me and said that for a week now, he couldn't, no one couldn't stop the message, stop the preach. And then I ju just remember of the pastor of the church. He he was so funny. He would make jokes whenever he would go up there. Oh, this is this is one of my guys. But you have to have the discernment to know what is a voice of God, a voice of the man, voice of devil. What is this mess? So I'm showing you that all of this in the life of Moses is the cause for the presence of God. 
in his life and the life of his people. people. But the effect, the organization, the discernment of spirit, and then the profound communion with God is a man with, of courage and braveness, a man of faith, so here's the effect, is the result of the presence of God. And that's prophetic for everyone that's here. This is prophetic. The presence of God. The presence of God in my life and your life, it's not only to take place. In the first place, the result is that it is perceptible to the human feelings you feel that it is god you feel god you know it's god the column of clouds the column of a fire this is a symbol of the presence of god they would see it they would sense it they would understand it and feel it because a column of a cloud it would stop the the heat from the desert and the column of fire would stop them from the from the coat so you're not going to be fooled. You're going to know whenever it's a presence of God or not. The presence of God in your life, you're going to discern if it's the presence of God or not. Second, the presence of God produces movement. Whenever there's a presence of God, after all the organizations, 44 chapters teaching, structures of organizations, rules, the presence of God goes over the tabernacle and then for the first time they leave. This is prophetic for you. You're not going to be stopped in the place of defeat. You're not going to be stopped in the place of crisis. You're not going to be stopped in the place of adversities. There's going to be a movement in your life. You're going to get out of this place of disaster, this place of difficulty, this place of defeat. You're never going to be humiliated at. The presence of God makes movement. You're going to get out of the inertia. You're going to get out of this defeated place. And Paul, in the book of Acts, when he was throwing rocks at, was just thrown away of the city. And then the text says that one of the disciples surrounded him. He stood up and entered the city again. So what tribulation, what adversity is going to keep you? No, nothing going to stop you because the presence of God is going to produce a movement for you to get out of this place. The presence of God has something else, has a certain way. To be lost in the desert is so easy. Nowadays, there's a, a paved a paved street in the desert. But back in the days, it was just mountains of yellow and orange. It was so easy to get lost in the desert. And the desert sim is a symbol of our trajectory in life. And you're not going to be not going to be lost in the desert. In Abraham, Whenever he, he left his house, he left without knowing where to go, but God guided him where he had to go. And the same thing for you. You're not going to be lost. You're not going to be hitting a wall. God's with you. He has a place for you to go. He has the direction for you. Third, the presence of God. No, the fourth. The presence of God, is God present with you? It's provision. If there is presence of God, there's provisions for you. God fed more than 2 million people 40 years in the desert. How is he not going to feed you? How is he not going to, to provide for you? If, if he fed all those people in the desert, how are you not going to have the prosperity coming from God? And all, along those 40 years in the desert, Nehemiah said that 
God provided to us over four years, nothing was missing. Their, their clothes didn't turn old and their feet didn't swallow. This is the provision of God. We go through fights, we go through difficulties, but there is a provision of God in your trajectory. God's not going to let you miss anything. There is promises of God for you. And if you're going to receive this with force, that extraordinary things happen when we have the presence of God. <laughs> My brother, water comes from rock. Blessings come from heaven. God opens up paths when there is no way to go. So there is miracle. There are things coming towards you. There are great things coming. God's a God of extraordinary acts that no one can do. Is God with you? Is God with us? Is His presence with you? So wait, the extraordinary things of God in your life. In sixth place and second to last, presence of God. Who has the presence of God here? Is God with you? Is God with you? Your glory will be manifested on us. When Moses goes down from the mountain, he didn't know, but his face shone. He was with God. The glory of God involved him. And nowadays, Pastor, on Colossians, says the mystery that was hidden in all the generations, in all the centuries and now God want to be known the, the wealthy of this mystery around the Gentiles what is this my mystery hidden for all those generations and centuries and now wants to be shown by God and what I want to tell you is Christ in us is the hope for the glory you have christ you have the presence of christ and even your friends say there's something in this man there's something in this woman this girl that i don't know what it is it is the presence of god the glory of god and i remember this preacher that came here and i'm invited him to record in a studio there were many people that were not Christians and whenever he got into the studio he said the glory of God's here so good he said it was a great show that we did and all the workers that were not Christians that were in the studio said what does this man have? What does he have? Whenever he just crossed our path, it had something different. The presence of God. And do you think your friends don't notice that there's something different in you? And it's not your skills or capabilities. It is the presence of God. His glory is present on us. And to end, the prophetic thing. Is God with you? There's presence of God with you? The victory is certain. There is victory for you. The victory is certain. You're not, your ship's not going to break. The desert's not going to defeat you. You're going to get to Canaan. There is victory in your emotional, financial, in your family. Here is where God wants to give you victory because he's in the direction of your life. Can you exalt our God? Can you worship him? Can you praise him? Or God, or amazing, incomparable God that manifests himself in his presence. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah.
And the presence of God today, like I said in Colossians, is in a way that Moses and Abraham, Jacob, and all the prophets, the giants of faith of the Old Testament, didn't understand. Because the presence of God, as the Gospel of John, where Jesus declared, I'm going to send you the Holy Spirit. I'm going to send another consolator, consolation to be with you forever. He's going to be in you and with you, the presence of God nowadays is different. It's not only with, but He's in us. He's with us and in us. He's in our spirit. So have no fear. Do not be desperate. Do not fall. Because if the presence of God is with you, you can be sure we can think that it's going to take time and I, he didn't manifest himself he didn't answer the door didn't answer just wait the presence of God is the guarantee of your victory is the guarantee that something's going to happen that some door is going to be opened I am a prophet for you today here I'm your pastor and here no one else has more authority than here than me in here to say that God's going to give you victory miracles are going to be towards your life who is here this night with me and can praise this God that's with us the church stand up